Hello and welcome to episode 19 of the Kingfisher Knits podcast. I'm really glad to be back after a longer than expected hiatus. I will explain why in a second. Perhaps you can already hear why, or at least partly why. Um, for those of you who are watching for the first time, my name is Madeline. I am living, I'm talking to you from my house in Zurich, where I live with my husband and our two small children, um, although I am originally from the UK. Uh, my husband is not from the UK, he's from Italy, sometimes that crops up. And um, again, for those of you who are new, show notes, which means everything that I talk about, um, links and necessary information will be down in the video description box below this video on YouTube. Um, I also include links down there of where you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram and the like, and my website. Um, I am a knitting, a keen knitter, a knitting designer, and a knitting pattern tech editor. So this is a podcast about knitting. Uh, thank you very much. If you're coming back to join us again, it's always nice to, um, to have a chance to talk to you all again. It feels like a really long time since I last podcasted. Um, and if you're, if you're new, thanks for checking us out. Um, I have a few couple of little admin bits at the very top of the episode. Um, I like to keep those things to a minimum so we can get into the knitting, but to be honest, the admin is also relevant to knitting, so it's not all bad. The very first thing is my Hindi bear hat. So the pattern, um, <coughs> sorry, I will try. So, okay, I do feel I have to put in a little illness disclaimer here. The reason I have not been podcasting um, was first timing. I do not podcast every week. That's just not possible for me um, with my life to find the time to podcast every single week. Uh, but I try to keep it about two weeks, maximum three. And when I would have podcasted to make that possible. I was ill. Both my kids were ill. We were all stuck at home together in one big miserable lump on the sofa. Um, and they are now better, which is great. Um, but my nasty cold has developed into an even nastier sinus infection. I am now on antibiotics. And so at least generally, I'm feeling quite a bit better. I'm still very tired and I still sound horrendous. I will try my very best to um, keep sniffling and coughing to a minimum but I cannot guarantee that there will be none of that. Okay. Now, I showed you last time my Hindi bed hat. When I showed it to you last time, it looked like this. I have now added a pom-pom, love it. Um, this is made from yarn from the lovely knitting in France. The pattern is called Hindi bed, which is Icelandic for raspberry. And I'm showing it to you again because she has now uh, released kits for this. Uh, they are available on her website. I will put the link down below. She has dyed up um, some of this base, which was a 100% superwash merino, but she has also dyed up some uh, non-superwash merino, which is just lovely. So it is a lovely uh, cable pattern, which allows a bit of texture and still allows um, some variegated yarn to shine. Um, the pattern is written in three different sizes. Um, I prefer wearing my hats nice down low on my head, more like a beanie. Um, this one has, you know, plenty of space and a little bit of slouch for bigger beanie, but not too much for my liking. But for those who like to put um, things further back on their head, there's a nice amount of slouch there. Um, and as almost always with my uh, patterns, information on how to... What's the word? Customise uh, the pattern should you wish to make it larger, smaller, longer in, is, is always given to the best of... Um, well, not my ability, the ability of the pattern. Some patterns are easy to customise, other pattern designs just, just aren't for the way they are, uh, they are conceived. This one, for example, I've done with a garter rib, but I say in the pattern, you can easily do a 2x2 two two rib if you just want a normal rib. Um, in this case, it's looking super feminine with this beautiful, lovely yarn, but there is no reason why this is um, uh, not a unisex pattern. <coughs> okay. First piece of admin out the way, second piece. Um, I've been running in the Ravelry group for a while now, um, a couple of cows for my shawl patterns that I released last year. And I want to uh, wrap that up. So I've now opened an FO thread. And what I decided to do was open an FO thread for both shawls together. Um, so the shawls that I'm talking about are the, sorry, Stracciatella shawl from uh, when did we release this? I can't even remember exactly when I released this. 
But um, this was a collaboration with Nora George Yarns in the UK. So she did kits for this. And the deal with the cowl is that if you have knit this, um, um, you can enter a photo of your finished object in the finished object thread. If you have knit yours using a kit from the dyer, um, in this case Tracy, um, Tracy from Nora George Yarns, you can enter your FO twice. And the other shawl, which is going to be in the same FO thread, sorry, upside down-ish here, is the Artemis shawl. Um, this is um, a shawl which I knit with yarn, oh, trying to show it all off, it's quite big, um, from Trey Liz. So again, made, if you have an FO, post it if you've made it with um, Trey Liz yarn, a kit, or it also stash, I said a kit, but also stash, if you had stash yarn from Tracy, that counts, if you had stash yarn, um, or you bought yarn, just not the kit, uh, from uh, Trey Liz, then you can also enter that as an extra entry. I'm not running it up like in a week, um, I think it's going to be there for about a month from now, so where are we now? Today is Monday the 19th of February, so um, it's probably going to be up until what does that take us to? Around Easter time, um, and then I will close that up. So, you know, even if you've just started, if you want to finish and be in with a chance for prizes, um, then that is, you can totally do that, is my point. Okay. Um, I also now have an offer in my Ravelry store that you can buy um, three of my pattern, patterns for the price of two. Um, so that is... Um, I think, oh gosh, I set it up a little while ago now, but I don't think I just spoke about it here. I don't think you need a coupon code or anything, but it's at the top of every pattern description um, on every pattern page for my patterns in my Ravelry store. I do have some patterns which are not in my Ravelry store, so I'm not selling those. They're being sold by my third-party publishers. Uh, but for the patterns which are in my Ravelry store, um, they all have the description at the top saying that that's the case, so you won't forget. <clears throat> so if you did have any patterns you wanted to buy, then um, that will help you out. All right, so that is all of the sort of strong admin our brain is a little bit addled here but um, I also just wanted to mention that we have our garment firsts cal I speak about that all the time and I will link the thread down below so you can go and check out all the details for that uh, it's been running for a while and I'm thinking it will wrap up around the end of uh, March normally I talk about whips first and then I talk about FOs but I'm wearing an FO so I've decided that I will start with FOs today um, I'm wearing my arboreal sweater. When you saw it last, I was here, so I'd done everything except the second cuff on the second sleeve. Um, so I promised that it would be finished, and it was. It was finished fairly soon after. I've worn it several times, and it's just beautiful. I will um, step up so that you can see it all, although obviously all the good stuff is going on around here. So. It is sort of normal, full length, not long length, but um, that's the length um, pretty much I think that's in the pattern, uh, or I just knit it to the length that I wanted it to. I don't exactly remember now. I think it's about 38 centimeters from um, the underarm cast on down to the hem. Um, I really, really love it. I knit at full length, but not long length sleeves. Again, and fitted sleeves, which is how I like them. I mean, I follow the sleeve pattern, I think, to the T. Um, I spoke a lot about needle sizes in my last uh, podcast. I'm not going to go into massive detail about them again here now, but I did use different needle sizes for um, the garter and the ribbing, and a larger needle size for the colour work, and then a main needle size for the stockinette stitch. <coughs> um, and I'm coming back to that in just a second. Um, I don't have the yarn... Oh wait, I do. <laughs> This yarn, showing it for the last time, um, well I still have yarn left so I'll probably make something else with this yarn. So not showing it for the last time, but this is um, Snailden, or Snailden, yarn, it's Danish. Uh, it comes from the Faroe Islands and it's blended with some Falkland Merino. It is a lovely uh, non-superwash woolen spun, but plied, three-ply yarn. Um, it is listed as a worsted weight on Ravelry. Um, I used the sky blue. Color. It doesn't come in that many colours. Uh, sky blue colour and the natural white. And I got a 1 100 gram skein of this. And I don't actually think I've weighed it to see how much I used of this one. Here is my trusty little scale. 
So I'm just going to wait. I did buy 10 skeins of the blue. So I had 500 grams of that because that came in 50 gram skeins. Um, so I used eight of those, a little bit less than eight of those. So I have um, two skeins left. So I use 400 grams. There we go. 400 grams of the main color. And I have 50 grams, 51 grams left of this. So half a skein of this color. So this is a total of 450 grams of yarn. Um, here, uh, it's non-superwash, so I could spit splice, which is fantastic, love it. I'm kind of not looking forward to the next time I knit a multicolored shawl in superwash yarn and have to weave in ends. Here, very few ends to weave in, obviously at the beginning and obviously when you repick up and everything, but you know, that's expected with a garment. But um, throughout when changing yarns, uh, changing yarns, changing from one skein to the next, no when, whens, no ends to weave in. Sorry, this is the Arboreal Pattern by Jennifer Steingast. I don't think I said that at the beginning. She is knit.love.wool on Instagram, super popular. She's got a bunch of yoke sweaters, each one more beautiful than the next, it would seem. Um, this pattern is listed as a DK weight, so the yarn that she used is listed as DK. If you look at its put up, it's more what I would call a worsted. We always have this problem with um, there being like too many names for yarn weights around, but then again, yarn can be any weight it wants, like from a sliding scale. Uh, I'm not gonna get into too much of a yarn weight discussion here. The yarn that I have used is listed as worsted weight on Ravelry, but the gauge of this pattern is 20 stitches over um, 10 centimeters. As I'm saying that, I'm kind of freaking out that it's not, but I'm pretty sure that it, that it is. Um, I might just take the time to see if I've got some notes here that tell me anything different. No, it is 20 stitches, okay. 20 stitches over 10 centimeters, which for me, I mean, uh, while of course you can knit a DK weight at that at that gauge, um, it, it's veering towards the worsted, not Aaron, but veering towards the worsted. It's certainly achievable with a worsted weight yarn, as long as it's not heavy worsted. So anyway, this is lovely. It's a lovely plump fabric. Um, really, really happy with it. And it's not itchy at all. It's not butter soft. It feels sturdy and rusty, rustic, and it's gonna last, but it's not prickly. I don't feel it at all against my skin. Um, there is a problem with this sweater, and I'm kind of thinking that perhaps I am, um, just gonna adjust that a little bit, that I am overthinking it, but it is the first thing I see when I look at myself wearing this in the mirror, and it's here. So, you may remember, <clears throat> I knit the body of this on 3.5 millimeter needles, which was perfect for my gauge. I came to do my sleeves, I was on holiday, I didn't have a 3.5 millimeter needle to do a magic loop, so I used a 3.25. And I thought that I would match the gauge, and I measured it, and it's actually, it's hardly off. It's not off enough really to account for this, so what has happened, I think, is that the moment I finished the yoke, which I knit on larger needles, four millimeter, or 3.75, it's all on my project page. I switched back to my stocking stitch gauge needle, and maybe I was like, whoa, color work done, you know, yay, this project's kind of done, although of course there's most of the knitting still to go. And I, maybe I loosened up, I was on a holiday, I don't know. So this is actually looser than even down, you know, the rest of the body. So it's kind of like amplified problem because this is a bit tighter than the body, and this is a bit looser than the body, and they're right next to each other here. It's kind of annoying me. And I'm not like a super perfectionist. I'm like, if you can cover something up, if it looks good enough, good enough is good enough. And I just keep noticing this. And I think it might also be how I blocked it. So I blocked it lying flat and there's a crease. And it's just kind of fading now, but it was right down there on the side. So obviously what you notice most is your silhouette. Anyway, I might see if I can steam block this all a little bit again and block it a little bit different. Um, I can think of two solutions. One is to rip out the sleeves and re-knit them at least with the right needle I use for the body and have a closer gauge, although it's not gonna be perfect. And I like that the sleeves are not uh, baggy. I don't really like baggy sleeves very much. So I feel like, uh, will I like it as much if they're baggy? And the other solution, of course I'm not ripping everything out. I'm not that type of perfectionist. I will not rip everything out for this kind of problem. Is to pick up stitches above and below, so like, on the last row, the first row after the yoke, and the last row where you separate it for the sleeves, knit that bit, which is just, it's just that bit there, 
again and Kitchener it together but that's to Kitchener over a really long circumference and I'm not confident you can do it of course that's the point like if I wanted to do it really perfectly I probably could manage to Kitchener all those hundreds of stitch stitches fine but like is it worth it so I am interested in your opinion like did you notice it like honest opinion were you like oh gosh look at those funny weird puffy sleeves or were you like what she took oh okay now I see what you're talking about but come on it's not a big deal so I would be interested in what people think because I have nobody, I, I mean, I have a couple of friends uh, here who knit. I don't see them very often and I kind of, I need a bit of uh, moral support. So please let me know if you have an opinion on the sleeve gate of the arboreal sweater. Thank you. Anyway, pattern's lovely. No problems with the pattern. Yarn was great. No problems with the yarn. So moving swiftly on, my second FO is another garment which just feels so surreal that it's February and I have two garments off the needles. Obviously I started this one in November, but this one was started at the end of, you know, late, last week of January. <coughs> Excuse me. This is, oh look, I'm all blue and, okay. I really like blue folks. I'm gonna have to force myself not to knit a blue sweater next time. These are, these are, this is the Bleu Fiel sweater. I think I pronounced that well from um, Ellie of Skein Dear Knits. It is a test knit that I've done. The pattern is not yet released, but I will let you know when it is out. The pattern's not for a short sleeved um, sweater. I should just point that out. Um, I mean, she provides you with instructions and I think it says uh, long sleeves and she gives options then for the body to be cropped or full length with or without waist shaping. So that's four options technically. Um, I just knit mine to the, with waist shaping, but to the length that I wanted. So I think it's about 37 centimeters from here to here, which is a touch shorter than I normally knit, but by no means cropped. Um, and I did my short sleeved. I told her I was interested in test knitting if I could do the short it short sleeved for two reasons. One was I started testing uh, later in the process. She asked me if I would be uh, interested after I'd expressed initial interest, but I said I had to order yarn. And while I could have feasibly done a long sleeve one, um, within the test deadline, it, it felt like a, <coughs> excuse me, it felt like a risky strategy. And I have always really wanted a short sleeved yoked top. And now I have one, so it was perfect. I have used Holst Super Soft. I will come back and talk about the finished item in just a minute, but just to go onto the yarn, I used Holst Super Soft. Um, this I have plenty of yarn left over because I ordered more because it's so ridiculously cheap. It's less. This was less than two euros a ball. I ordered it direct from Holst, direct from their website. And if I had ordered just the yarn I needed to make the top, the shipping would have cost more than the yarn, which is ridiculous. So I ordered more. Um, this is the opal colorway, which is the colorway for the main uh, body, uh, the main color. And I used Accru, is the creamy natural white and Mariner. Now Mariner shows up a bit funny here, but maybe if I hold it close enough, I'm not sure you can see any, there's some greeniness in there. So this is like a really, really deep teal blue. And um, I thought it was interesting how uh, color work really, uh, what colors you pair together affects how each color looks in color work. So if you know, if you pair a color um, you can pair these, especially these colours like the blue-greens and stuff, which can tend to uh, change how they appear depending on what they're next to. So sometimes they might look much more green and other times a lot more blue. I think here, to, even to the naked eye, certainly to the computer, um, this looks like just like a dark navy. Like not, you can I think you can tell it's not black, certainly by the eye you can tell it's not black, but you cannot tell that it's really greeny, a greeny blue, whereas you can when you just look at the yarn by itself, by the naked eye. So this is a colour I really, really like, and I was a little disappointed that it comes out um, just like a navy here, but it's not the end of the world. It's it's doing its job. It was just me being a bit pernickety about it. Anyway, this is a top-down sweater. As you can see, it has quite um, a high up neckline, which is nice, because that's not often the case on yoke sweaters. It has short rows at the back to raise the back. Um, I use different needle sizes for the stocking stitch for the and for the ribbing and for the colour work. But I still struggle with gauge. And this yarn is incredibly sticky. So I like this yarn. I like how it... I do enjoy knitting with it, certainly in stocking stitch. Um, I kind of think the next time I knit with it, I'm going to have to try knitting with it held double. Because it's very fine. 
and I had quite some hand pain by the time I finished knitting with it, which I'm not blaming the, on the yarn. I think it was a, a bunch of circumstances all going together, and I might talk a little bit further about hand pain another time, because I'm going to see my doctor about it. But I don't really want to go into all the details right now, because I've got so much to talk about. So um, just know I was struggling a bit, and I uh, struggled a bit with the colour work, and that improved a lot when I bought a little gadget, which I'm going to mention in just a second. But um, I kind of was, I think I started off being really, really conscious of my gauge. So if anything, I was a bit loose. But in the end, given that this yarn allows quite a lot um, of wiggle room when it comes to blocking, it's come out kind of perfect. And things kind of tighten up around here. So the gauge is 24 stitches and I was getting more like 25. And in some places here, probably the average is a, is a touch over 25. Um, so it just means that the yoke, I think overall, is like an inch tighter than it was meant to be. The size that I knit, which is the 36 inch, the one that's meant for a 36 six inch bust, had a bit of, like, has a tiny bit of ease in it for me anyway, a bit of positive ease, which is recommended with um, colour work. You shouldn't be going for negative ease. Um, but like, this yoke really has exactly the right amount of ease for me, and this one it just made it, let's put it that way. It's like, it's zero ease probably, but it's not tight. I'll wear it next time and you'll see. Um, but that's entirely my fault, not my fault, my, my issue that I had, but I'm not beating myself up about it. What really went funny was that my gauge then loosened up down here. So I went back to stocking stitch, changed to my smaller needles for stocking stitch, um, and the gauge, as I said, should be 24, and I have much more like 22.5, 23 stitches. Um, so it's a bit uh, looser than it should be. I did it with waist shaping, so in the end, the overall effect... <coughs> Sorry. The overall effect... Um, is not disastrous. I tend to have uh, close to fitting things or it just kind of really looks like straight down. It's not baggy, but it's um, it's not quite how it's supposed to be. And I did think about, um, once I finished the test and sent all the information to Ellie, I did think about stopping and ripping back. Um, but at least right now with the pain that I was having knitting with this yarn on the needles that I was using, um, I decided just to call it a day. People have asked me what I thought about this yarn. I still really like this yarn. I think it's a great value. I love how it transforms. The, the finished uh, fabric is fantastic. Um, I think that I don't really like uh, knitting with it at this particular gauge, um, with it help just one strand. But to make it tighter, a tighter gauge, I, you then have to go to quite small needles, for me at least, for my knitting. And I'm not sure I'd want to do that. So I'm kind of thinking that for me, um, going forward knitting with this yarn, maybe things will change, maybe I just need to try knitting on it with different needles or what have you. I was using my high high sharps, this is a very good point, I was using my high high sharps, terrible 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 choice. Um, not because I don't like high high sharps, but um, this yarn is uh, woolen spun, two ply, and it sticks to itself as it is, and so because it, it kind of tends to stick to itself when you're sticking in the needle um, to knit, uh, the sharpness of the high high sharps, which are really sharp, will very easily catch on the tiniest bit of the yarn that stuck was sticking to the stitch below, and you split your stitches or terrible. So I did buy some high high steels, and that's what I finished the body on. And maybe that then changed my gauge because I had I don't know. But the high high steels were, were fine. Um, I was still struggling with knitting with metal needles at the moment because of some hand pain, uh, but. The steels were by far best, and actually, after I had bought them and started knitting them, I was watching an episode of Elias Game Deer's podcast, and she was saying how for her, uh, when she's knitting colour work and, and sweaters in general with these kinds of yarns, so non-superwash uh, sticky yarns, um, that she doesn't, she can't use very sharp needles, so she uses ones much more like the high high steels, which have a lovely, slightly more rounded tip. Um, I feel like there was something else I wanted to say about this. Oh yes, I said I was going to talk about my little gadget. So what, for me, really, really improved the whole process because I was struggling a bit with this yarn, and especially with the stickiness. I was knitting, uh, obviously, the stranded part, and um, I went and bought this yarn guide. So this is a yarn guide from Prim. Prim is spelled P-R-Y-M, for those of you who don't know this company. It's like ubiquitous. You find all of their products here in just normal sort of general haberdashery type stores here. They will um, almost always have a selection of prim and needles and notions. I don't really have any prim needles apart from like when I first started knitting. And I have a couple of their notions and I knew I had to try something to make colour work more fluid for me. Now, 
I'm a fairly um, I'm a fairly rhythmic knitter, but I'm not very slow. And the difference in speed that I was finding I had knitting color work was causing me issues. Like I really like how it is, and I kind of wish I could be more of a process knitter when it comes to it. And I do enjoy the process. I love looking at the chart and having the yarns going and seeing it growing. Um, but it's probably more of a product knit for me. Um, and I had to improve the process, otherwise it was kind of driving me mad. Um, I've knit colorwork before also. I've knit a yoked jump, uh, dress for my daughter and I knit that with a uh, non-superwash, sorry, superwash yarn, sm smooth yarn, worsted spun, uh, the wrong yarn in a way, but like it works fine actually for that particular project. I showed it off many episodes ago and um, that was not a struggle for me. That was not a problem. Um, but this yarn that sticks to itself, I had a real problem with tensioning. I said it before, um, you, you're knitting on uh, three stitches of one uh, colour and uh, when you need the next colour, it's all loose because it came up together with the other one. I'm holding them both on my left hand here. And this really helped. I mean, it doesn't stop it completely because the moment each strand of yarn happens to touch each itself, you know, there's times where you still have to sort of uh, adjust, but um, I really enjoyed it. So this obviously can take up to four strands of yarn. If you're crazy and want to do Latvian mittens or something, um, maybe one day I'll need it for three if I ever want to attempt the Birkin sweater properly. But um, I was just using for two of them. And I think so what I did was I used them on the two most extreme to have them more separated. Um, I mean, it's not a totally perfect tool. It's not like I could put it on and then I'm just, it's not like knitting stocking stitch from that point on. There's still concentration involved, but it was much, much better. Um, one thing I will say, I know there are other different types that exist and maybe I will try some over the uh, coming months if I can get my hands on some. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive little gadgets, so I'm all for trying different things. This particular one um, is plastic and it sits on top of the finger, so it kind of, what's the word, like suffocates your skin. So I, and it's also a bit big for me, I have really small hands, so I just wrap a tiny, just a little bit of tissue, the right size, around, and then I put it on, and I found that much more comfortable for knitting for longer periods of time. Um, I did actually, I was looking up uh, these kind of things on the internet. I mean, th there exists videos showing you how to use them, and opinions on them, and I was, you know, interested in that. And one of the ones I found, which was actually using, I think, this exact one, and she was like, I love it, it's wonderful, too bad I can't uh, use it at my knitting group. Because, because they would laugh at me or something. And I just thought, isn't that horrible? I mean, it's not like you're a bad knitter because you find a certain gadget better, useful, and someone else has no need for it. I don't really think that that's, like, that's not a thing. It should not be a thing. So a few people were interested in these. I believe you can find them in shops, certainly in continental Europe. I don't remember now. I think Prim, you also find them in the UK. Um, yeah, you definitely find Prim products in the UK. It's definitely sewing ones. So they're not just knitting. They have lots of... Um, lots of products, especially for yeah, sewing and embroidery and haberdashery type stuff. Um, and I think some people in the States said that they found them on eBay. So I will put um, down below what it's called and you can look for it if you're interested. Or other ones. I think other places in America make them too. Or their own version. Okay. That already feels like a lot of information. Um, I will... I'm going to move on to whips and um, I will try not to dwell too long on anything right now because nothing feels like um, that interesting uh, to me but I don't know maybe I'm still I'm you know I've not been feeling well I before I when I before I got ill and I finished these um, two garments I immediately pulled out the other garment that I have on my needles but I haven't worked on it again for uh, for at least a week because it involves concentration, which I'm not uh, capable of right now. But it is my uh, Recoleta cardigan by Jorge Locatelli, and it's really beautiful. It has this lace panel all the way down the front, all the way around the collar, and all the way down the back. So there are two different charts to follow, and I'm using darkish grey yarn, so I can't do it unless I have good light. But I've said all this before. It's not a complaint. I love it. It just it's a slower, a much slower knit for me than anything else I've been working on recently. But that's fine. So maybe I'll just fold it in half and show it to you here. So like this is the collar running down the front. That's one sleeve there. This is the back. So 
maybe I open that out a little bit more so you can see. And the other side. There. So when you wear this, it's obviously an open cardigan, but there's a lot of collar going on. So the idea is that those will obviously when block block out, they will meet and even actually overlap. Um, I have done all of the waist decreases. I still got a couple of those. There were more decreases than I've shown there. Sorry. And now I just started my waist and my hip increases. I am using uh, the beautiful Traveller Aran yarn from the Plucky Knitter. I believe that this has been discontinued now. This is the Wonderlust colorway and it is a merino uh, uh, silk and yak base. It's really, really beautiful. Um, I have already used two, almost two full skeins. What I did was I've always been alternating skeins, although I probably was overdoing it a bit in this case because they are, they're really similar. But anyway, I'm alternating skeins throughout. I decided to do it. I'm doing it. Um, so I kept back a little bit of yarn of what I was using when I finished the sleeves. So I kept knitting the body to a certain point and then I, I don't know where my ends are here, but I switched to some new skeins. What's what here? Here we go. Yeah, so you can see here, it's when I attached a bunch of new skeins so that I kept a bit of what was, what was used for the top so that when I start the sleeves, um, that will blend better. Um, so I had five skeins of this yarn. I'm already a decent way through the next two skeins, what I probably will do is, um, it's a fairly long length cardigan, so I think that I will potentially stop after I've done my hip increases, leave those stitches, come back and work on the, so I leave the cord in on those stitches and maybe work on a sleeve. So I can see how much yarn a sleeve takes, because I don't really want, while I maybe would be okay with like, like truly, I mean, more than three quarter length sleeves, so like almost like that here. I would not be happy with, you know, sleeves around the elbow with this. I want it to have the right sleeve length. So I will try it on and if I think it looks nice around here, I think that's something, it's quite a dressy cardigan. So I think that's okay if it doesn't have full length sleeves. We shall see. Um, what am I doing here? Try not to lose my needles. Anyway, I'm still really happy. I've done, I feel like it's a fair amount of progress. It's a... Every pair of rows there is a decent amount of concentration and knitting. Okay. Um, the other thing that I've been doing a lot of since I cast off my sweaters is swatching and thinking about designs and preparing potential design submission ideas. So obviously those I can't share because um, uh, I wouldn't be able to share any part of that design process for something that's going to be published in a magazine or a book or, you know, by a young company or what have you. Uh, but it has been really interesting and it's also stimulated some ideas of <coughs> designs I wanted to do uh, just by myself with yarn that I already have. So I'm not going to talk about, um, about all of that uh, for obvious reasons and also I don't I'm not like crystallized on a lot of these things, so I'm not sure how interesting that would be. I think I prefer talking about the design process once I'm like in the full swing of things, and I have one whip um, to show you about that. But um, one thing I could not resist to share, uh, living in my lovely geeky chemistry project bag, is the um, is a few skeins of yarn that I pulled out. So I pulled out all of my single stain single skein stash. And I kept putting together these four skeins, which at the beginning I didn't even realise they were all from the lovely Amy of the Stranded Dye Works. Of the Stranded Dye Works? Of Stranded Dye Works. There we go. And they're all on her solo base, which is her 100% Superwash Merino base. Which I hadn't uh, used from her yet because I have done that shawl design um, in three different yarn weights um, of her yarn. Um, that will be released um, in the relatively near future, and I will talk about that again probably in the next podcast when everything is settled. It's currently in testing. Anyway, but I had not worked with her solo base. <coughs> so I pulled out these skeins, um, and just beautiful. So the first one, and this obviously goes with everything, and I had bought this exactly for that reason that it's going to go with a lot of things. This is her er eraser. eraser. Gosh, I feel like I can't pronounce that word, which is really ridiculous. 
Eraser colorway, which is just this beautiful um, off-whitey cream with these black speckles, basically. But it, I don't know, it's just, it's really nice. And it, you end up with some slight tones of gray in places where the speckles have spread, have spread out more and other places where you just get these flecks of really dark gray. Um, and this, of course, goes with lots of things, right? And uh, I pulled up my other, this is my absolute favorite skein I think I have of, of Amy's Yarn. And yeah, it's a, it's a tonal skein, but it's just so beautiful. This is called Mint Imperial. And I just, I don't really have the words to describe how beautiful it is. And you've probably seen this before, but not wound up. I had put it together in my mind with a set of uh, mini skeins, which I have from uh, the, from Skein Queen, which are all uh, sort of from a sky blue running up to like a really ink dark midnight blue. Um, and I thought that they were going to be at the Sprite's Fen Shawl. I still really like the idea, but I didn't know. I just put this together with this. And then I have this skein, and this is her Metalsome colorway. It's considerably more saturated and darker on this base than it is on her Oasis base, because I use this exact same colorway in my shawl design. And um, I really, I just, it's beautiful. It looks, it looks very different, and that's the thing. I mean, Superwash, sorry, Single Ply Superwash Merino takes dye like nobody's business. And that's why you get just these most beautiful color, colors, and it's just not the same on other bases. And... Um, that's fine. I mean, I'm not someone who feel a desperate need to use single ply for um, for garments and the base just because it has beautiful colours. I know it's not going to wear brilliantly, but it's fantastic for shawls. Anyway, it's just beautiful. And I actually thought that these go really nicely together. And then I realised that this has got... You can't really see very well, but this has got... Can I show you that? Some pretty bright pink, just hints in there. And I have this game. Okay, that's totally blown out. It's not that, it's not quite that fluorescent, but it is really, it is really bright. It's called Party Dress, also from Amy. And I don't know, I thought that even these go quite nicely together. <clears throat> so I thought of this as like a three skein combination, or this. Or as I was discussing with some people, all four. So I made a story for this on Instagram, and I think it's still, I put it into my, you can now highlight stories on Instagram, so you can leave them in with your, um, on your profile, and I had a poll of, like, should it be option, what was it, option one, which was like this, or option two, and then I had a, a picture just with all four. Anyway, I've been swatching, that's why you can see that some of them being wrapped back in again, I've done a couple of different ideas, and I'm sort of settling in. Um, more on one, but I'm not, um, I still have some playing to do, and actually a couple of other ideas um, with different yarn, which I think might feed back into this idea, but I did want to show you the yarn, the yarn, sorry, there, it's just so beautiful, all of it, so it's just funny, I bought all of these skeins, all of them separately, I think, maybe these came together in the same order, but the others all came separately, and now here they are all together, and I'm just like, actually... They're perfect together. So, hopefully you'll see some work on that soon. And if you don't, I got distracted by something else. That's just the way of the, way of the world. Um, but I am working on another project, which is definitely happening because it's already cast on. I uh, swatched originally. So this is using some lovely yarn I had. And I used this same yarn when I knit, um, did the test knit of the mix and match baby, well, child sweater, I think she called it. Uh, from Mina Phillip of The Knitting Expat, I knit a baby size, I think it was three to six months, in the short sleeves with the texture pattern, and um, for a friend of ours who had a baby. Anyway, so I swatched for this in the round, because I was using, this is an Aran weight yarn, so I had knit it at pretty tight gauge for Mina's pattern, to be honest, because her pattern was written for DK or worsted, and I nearly did it in a worsted yarn that I had, which was just kind of a navy, and then I just loved this so much, um, that I wanted to knit it for the baby in this. So I just had to knit it at quite a tight gauge. It worked out fine. And the measurements were almost, were, were, were exactly in it. I knit to gauge. But this time I wanted to knit it at a more normal gauge for such a yarn. So um, even a touch loose. So I think I've done, I, here I did five millimeter needles and here 5.5, which is a bit too loose. So I'm going with this gauge down here, which is 17 stitches over 10 centimeters. I did my swatch in the round and I left it attached to the yarn. I often do this because then I'm gonna rewind this yarn back out of its swatch at some point it's just a stocking stitch swatch I don't need to keep it 
Um, I knit quite a lot of it because I wanted it to be, I'm doing a garment with it, so I wanted it to be quite accurate. Um, <clears throat> so I knit plenty so I could measure from both sides and what have you, and also get an idea of row gauge, although it's not so important in this uh, particular design. And um, I then realized that this is non-superwash yarn, and so I could spit splice it, so it was a bit ridiculous. I, it was okay if you end up with a small ball of yarn, you can still use it easily without having to weave in ends, but hey. This is the Helena Aran base from Posh Yarns. It's discontinued, I think, already for a long time. This color was called the Gilly colorway, and I got this on a D-stash on eBay. I got 11 skeins of this yarn, so I've got plenty of this yarn. And, um, but it's, I was still happy to do a design with it because it's an Aran weight uh, yarn, and this project will work well with all other Aran weight yarns, and you can use, um, you know, yarns which have a decent amount of variegation in it like this, or you can just use one colour. So for me, it wasn't a reason not to design with this yarn because I wouldn't call this a very yarn specific project. So I have cast on for a for the pullover sweater or yes it's not for me. <laughs> it's for my son. Um so it's gonna be I always can see this as a child garment. Um, there's no reason it wouldn't work also as an adult garment, but I'm starting with the child one also because I really want to make him uh, another pullover. Actually, I never made him a pullover. I made him cardigans, but I want to make him a pullover. I want to use this yarn. Um, so for now, it's bottom up. I'm just knitting up in the round up until um, the underarms. This design is going to be uh, with saddle shoulder shaping. I actually, I've already designed a baby garment um, with saddle shoulder saddle shoulder shaping say so that three times fast um it's one of my favorites i really love how it looks i didn't bring that garment out to show you that was probably a an oversight but anyway i'm going to talk about this again in the future obviously uh, this this design um so i'll show you that at some other point but it's going to have um on the sleeves it's going to have a cable running up all the way uh, from the wrist all the way up to the neckline so i will start that um at some point soon i didn't do that yet just because I wasn't feeling well, so I wanted to cut this on and just have something to go round and around um, on without having to look at, uh, think about the, the cabling for now. Because that's just a little bit too much for me right now. I've just found like a blip in the yarn, I might have to cut that out. Okay. I am alternating skeins on this project and I'm alternating skeins every single round. That's just how I like to do things um, in the round because I tried. So when you alternate skeins and you're working flat, you obviously alternate every two rows because you've got to do a right side and a wrong side and then you can all, then you can switch. And so it, that works fairly well uh, to break up any pooling or what have you or to blend in the yarn nicely. But uh, when I do it, I don't, I've tried to do it in the round um, and what happens is you knit two rounds and I, I just kind of forget and I'm trying to, I'm always constantly checking and thinking, oh, is it time to switch or is it not? And it slows me down just to, having to stop or the thought process. And so I switch every, every round. I get to the new, beginning round mark up. I know I want to switch, drop a yarn, pick up the next one, go. And it's much smoother. I'm not thinking constantly about, oh, why am I, did I pick up the right yarn? I just know, I know what I did because that's what I do. I change it all the time. So it might sound like a palaver, but it actually is easier because I'm not thinking I forget after like three stitches after bringing, beginning my round, I forget which round I'm on already easily. I mean, when it's plain stocking stitch. So that is just a tip for me. I mean, maybe you think that's ridiculous, but that's what I do. So anyway, this is currently on four mi uh, five millimeter needles. I did my ribbing on four millimeter needles. Um, some people, once you get to bigger needle sizes, would only go down uh, one needle size, not two for ribbing. Uh, I have a problem with ribbing gauge. I really don't rib very well. That sounds a bit wrong. Um, and actually, I was watching Hohi Locatelli. Hohi, sorry, I always say Hohi, but she's Hohi. Anyway, Hohi Locatelli has started an English podcast. She calls it Hohi's Journal. And she was saying in her episode how, how like, she's not very good at ribbing. <laughs> like, it always looks a bit sloppy. I mean, I see such beautiful ribbing on some people's project. And I just, I have to concentrate so hard to make it look any better than it currently does that it's like, well, I wouldn't do it. So... It is what it is. It's not that bad. It's just not absolutely perfect in my opinion. And I did a tubular, I did an Italian cast on in order to get a tubular cast on. So the Italian cast on is a one by one cast on. So it makes a one by one rib, beautiful tubular edge, 
I much, much prefer it to a tubular cast on. There's no, you're just doing a long tail, a, a variation of a long tail cast on and some setup rows. I have a tutorial on it actually, so I will link that. Um, and there's no involved, there's no uh, professional cast on needed and then uh, extra needles and the like. You just don't need it. So I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with a tubular cast on, it's just my preference. But if you want to do a two by two, uh, normally you have to do a tubular cast on. So I just decided to try to do um, it with an Italian cast on. So you still cast on your one by one rib and then the la the first row where you work after your setup, um, you basically, I mean, I maybe will do a tutorial on it if I think it's gonna be important for this pattern. Um, you switch the arrangement of some of the stitches so that you end up with two knit stitches next. So two pulse stitches basically. And it does make a slightly weird effect at the bottom. And that's probably going to bug some people. So, I mean, I will always say in this pattern, you know, firstly, if you don't want to do a tubular cast on, just do your regular cast on and then start your two by two ribbing. But, and for people who like a tubular edge and hate this, they can do a proper tubular cast on if they, if they so, if they so wish. So I don't hate it. It's not, it's not as nice as when you do it for a one by one, but it still gives a nicer edge for me than just doing a normal cast on. Anyway, that's this project. I haven't measured it actually, so I don't know how far I am away from the underarms. I guess not that far, really. Um, so I have, just show you the yarn in the skeins, because I didn't, there is, I mean, here, the contrast is showing up stronger as ever, but you can see there's a fair amount of difference between those two skeins. So alternating is necessary, both to avoid pooling, which I did get some of in the baby sweater that I knitted when I knitted just with one skein and to avoid there being clear changes when you change from skein to skein. That wasn't an issue obviously with the baby sweater because I just used one. Um, so in retrospect maybe I would have um, alternated from like at least the middle, uh, sorry from the center, pulling from the center and the outside of the, of the cake in order to just avoid the pooling. Anyway I'm gonna stop now because um, I've run out of things to talk about and I'm also not feeling 100% as I told you so I think that I need to be careful on my energy levels for right now but I did want to just say thank you very much uh, to everybody for watching the podcast we've had a bit of a we're having a conti continual rise in the number of subscriptions which is very encouraging I love watching knitting podcasts um, and that's why I'm doing a knitting podcast and so I'm just really, really grateful to everybody who engages and comments and joins in and what have you. So if you um, are watching and you're not subscribed, please do click subscribe. If you did like the video, click like. Um, although, you know, you don't have to, obviously. Um, I'm just glad that people are people are people seem to be enjoying the podcast. So I wish you all a great rest of the week. I'm going to go and sit and watch some more of the Winter Olympics. Uh, I'm really, really, really loving watching that. Um, and it's great when you're not feeling so well, something, some co consistent entertainment that's going on. And as ever, if you have any comments or questions, just pop them down um, in the comments or come join in on discussions in the uh, Ravelry group. So that's everything for now. Bye.